Welcome back to Inside Tennessee. Our guest this morning, Bob Corker, running for the U.S. Senate, and Bill Williams. Uh, John asked you earlier, uh, Ms. Ms. Corker, about uh, any mistakes you could have made. I wonder if there have been mistakes made in your campaign. There was a change in management here two or three weeks ago. Tom Ingram, who many of us here in Knoxville know, mm -hmm. who guided Lamar Alexander through many campaigns, uh, has uh, taken over the reins of your campaign. Ben Mitchell's been uh, gone off somewhere else. Why, why was that? Well, you know, as you've mentioned, it's a tight race, and we we ended the primary, and right after it, it was just it's just been like dead even. You know, there's been slight fluctuations, and we just felt like we wanted to step it up to another level. Uh, Tom's been around; he's had a lot of experience. I found myself at t sometimes during the campaign, uh, just to be 100% candid, I'd, I'd get off a conference call or getting emails about decisions and you stand up to the podium and you've got that on your mind and it just doesn't allow you to be as good a candidate as you'd like to be and so Tom has come in and you know the the, the campaign is being run and I can come out and be with you all today and hopefully have a personality and and do the things that I need to do as a candidate we just felt like it, it needed to step up to another notch we understand the tremendous importance of this race and want to make sure that with all the effort that we've put out but also more importantly all the people across the state has put have put out on our behalf that we did what we needed to do to win the race and we felt like bringing in some additional leadership we've also had a lot of other people by the way who joined the campaign uh, you know the Senate session ended and we were able to, to really capitalize on some great talent from uh, around the country to come in here and help us and I think the the campaign is showing a tremendous difference what would the next couple of weeks be like for you? I mean, what time does your day start and what time yeah. does it you know, end? I don't early, think it's, it's obviously, you know, it's uh, seven days a week, uh, you know, in your entire waking day. You know, you don't get as much sleep as you normally do. But it's actually really energizing. And I was just at uh, down in Anderson County at the Jefferson Pharma, uh, Pharmacy. And, uh, uh, you know, going into a luncheon and uh, area and meeting with people and talking to them, you're doing it. At this point in the campaign, you do tremendous amounts of just retail politicking where you're out with people and people are really focused on this campaign now and it's, it's very energizing and I think you'd all love to do it for a week anyway. <laughs> so. uh, -uh. <laughs> uh Mr. Corker, the Mark Foley incident, um, it is reported, has hurt the Republican Party generally in, in this upcoming election. Has it had any effect on your campaign? Have people raised this question about the party? Yeah. You know, truly the only questions I've had about it have been from media and obviously we have had media in here from not only around the country, I just left the New York Times and Washington Post, but around the world and so there's a lot of people focused on that and that is a sort of like a number one question people ask. I have not heard anything from constituents about it. Obviously, I've never served in Washington. Matter of fact, the only person who's been in Washington over the last 10 years is my opponent. I think people just look at Washington in general, and obviously it doesn't, it's, it's a negative thing for the Republican Party for this to have happened, but I think it's also negative just uh, in people's minds about Washington itself. As a father, I've got two daughters that are 18 and 17. I think his behavior is despicable, and I think there ought to be an absolutely independent, full investigation, and anything that's gone on to condone that kind of behavior, uh, people need to be punished for that. It's absolutely atrocious. You know, so many people send uh, there are young people out of college or in, in breaks or whatever to Washington to get that experience of, you know, public service and uh, the, the, the country's good and to have that kind of activity taking place is absolutely uh, uh, terrible. You talk about that retail politicking. We've got about 45 seconds. But what are you hearing on the campaign trail from constituents? What are their top issues? Is it, is it the economy? Is it Iraq? What is it? You know, um, it, it depends on where you are. I mean, you know, obviously if you're in West Tennessee on a cotton farm, it's the farm bill. If it's, uh, uh, it really does depend on where you are, what type of person you're meeting with. I would just say in general, though, people in this state view our country as having some of the most difficult issues that I remember them ever talking about in my lifetime. I think people generally are concerned and I think they want to send somebody who's mature, who's, have, who's had real life experiences, who's grounded uh, in the things that they believe to be important to Washington 
to solve these problems. And and uh, but there is a concern. There's concerns about everything from energy to health health care. My gosh, I, I sit in people's living rooms and they're concerned about health care affordability. Companies are concerned because they want to carry it for their employees, but it's expensive. Energy, the Iraq uh, war, terrorism. Uh, you name it. There are a lot of concerns. Yeah. And I look forward to sol helping solve those with others uh, in Washington in January. Well, we'll be back with more of that smorgasbord of issues in just a minute.